Hello, I'm Karen Pascal. I'm the Executive Director of the Henry Nouwen Society. Welcome to a new episode of Henry Nouwen, Now and Then. Our goal at the Henry Nouwen Society is to extend the rich spiritual legacy of Henry to audiences around the world. Each week we endeavor to bring you an interview with someone who's been deeply influenced by the writings of Henry Nouwen, or perhaps even a recording of Henry Nouwen himself. We invite you to share the daily meditations and these podcasts with your friends and family. Through them, we can reach out to our world with Henry Nouwen's writings, his encouragement, and of course, his reminder that each of us is a beloved child of God. Now, let me take a moment to introduce our guest. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Shad Cabango, best known to fans simply as Shad. He is a Juno award-winning Canadian rapper with four very successful solo albums and many more album collaborations. Shad became a more broadly known name across Canada when he hosted Q, CBC's flagship daily radio program on the arts. Shad has gone on to gain worldwide recognition hosting four seasons of the Emmy and Peabody award-winning series, Hip Hop Evolution. Shad is a singer-songwriter with a deep and prophetic take on the times we're living in. Always socially conscious, Shad took on the theme of peace in his 2018 album, A Short Story About War. He has been a good friend to the Henry Nouwen Society, speaking at our Voices for Peace gatherings. Shad, I am so glad to have the opportunity to talk with you today. Sure. When I set out to talk with you, Shad, one of the things I said was, I wanted your perspective on our times and how we mm-hmm. go forward from this point. So maybe that's a place where we could start. Well, my sense my sense is that a lot is changing really fast and that we're struggling, well, that we can't keep up as human beings and we and our institutions are not kind of equipped to keep up with all the changes. And by and by that I mean I mean the way technology is is shaping who we are and is shaping how we relate to each other. Um, I think we're also coming up against the limits of a lot of things. Obviously, environmentally, we're, we're, we're realizing that we're coming up against the limits of, of how we can live. And again, in terms of our institutions, they're not, they're not well equipped to deal with that crisis. Like that's an international crisis and we still don't cooperate internationally. We compete between nations. I don't think that's going to work. And then we're also coming up against the the end of certain destructive ideas of of racial hierarchy and and just and just really coming up against the absurdity of of the inequalities that exist in our society. So yeah, I think I think a lot is changing. It it seems like a time um, it's like a, a a really important time in history. It strikes me even as you say this that uh, I think about the the words that Esther was challenged with, you know, mm. for such a time of the, as this, are you coming to the kingdom? Mm. In some ways, I look at your art and I, I listen to your music and I really hear you way out ahead prophetically, even in that album that you uh, released in 2018, A Short Story of War. There's a there's a prophetic nature to it. And, and uh, tell me, do you s- yourself feel like that's what the artist is called to, to speak mm-hmm. forward into the times we're living in? Yeah, I, I do. I think that's one, that's one purpose an artist can serve. Um, like I've heard this saying about a lot of, of different vocations, but uh, this, this thing of, of, of comforting the disturbed and disturbing the comfortable you know, I think that's that's part of an artist's function. Um, I think part of an artist's function is to tell is to tell new stories, come up with new ways, basically come up with new ways for us to look at ourselves and and each other and the world. That's that's important. That was yeah, that was something I tried to do with this album. Um, like if you think about the climate now in terms of of discourse, right? It's just so obviously polarized, and it's difficult for us to hear one another. And I feel like new stories just help us look at each other differently, help us look at the issues differently, help us look at ourselves differently. Um, and by differently, I mean kind of the same old the same old story that's at kind of at the heart of 
of the the the, the struggle um, that we that we have as human beings to to relate to one another and connect and cooperate, but um, but just a new way, a new way of of seeing that challenge. I think that's part of it, and and yeah, a lot of artists are kind of sensitive to what's what's going on around them, right? Um, and I think a lot of that album for me just came out of a sensitivity to I was living in Vancouver at the time, and that's a very unequal society, and um, I think I was very sensitive to that, and 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 so the story started to bubble up in my subconscious. I think as my mind's way of trying to make sense of it um, for me. So it, it just comes out of a sensitivity that artists have and a desire to, well, we love to be heard and, and, and understood. And, uh, and so, and so new stories come up. And, and I think that's part of the, the function of artists too, is just to give us new, fresh ways of, of looking at something. Now, it, I, one of the things I've loved about your work is you're so collaborative. You are also somebody who, who in a way shares the light and brings light to other artists that you see are speaking um, in a brilliant and fresh way. And, and you, you come together. I love that collaborative aspect of what you're doing. I want to ask you, this has been an interesting time. We've lived through now almost a year of pandemic. It's not quite there, but that mm-hmm. that has shut a lot of things down. Clearly any plans to go touring and all those kinds of things that would have been part of 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 moving forward had to draw back. What's been happening for you in the midst of this? How are you dealing with this time and and uh is it a fertile time for you? It's been it's been hard just as a social creature. I miss people. Um when I think at the end of the day, oh, how was today? Well, it, usually I feel pretty fine about it, but at the end of the at the end of a week or so, I I do miss I do miss people. I get I get tired in a strange way. I get tired not from um, not getting enough rest, but I get tired from not uh, getting enough of the things that give me energy, which is people. So I do miss that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a very social person by nature and collaborative, like you said. So, yeah, I miss that. As far as inspiration goes, I've been missing some creative inspiration precisely because of that, because I'm not, you know, in touch with, with people. But um, on the other hand, on the other hand, there's been a nice freedom at moments to, to respond creatively in, in whatever way just sort of comes to me. Um, by which I mean, because I have I have a career as as a rapper, it's like I I get into the cycle of doing that professionally. Like you know, I make an album, I tour the album, and then I maybe have a bit of a fallow period, and then I'm I'm doing it again. Whereas um, now, because those you know that routine is gone, um, you know, I found myself like writing more um, kind of essays and just making silly stuff on on Instagram to entertain people, you know, just just really creating whatever I intuitively feel like creating, which has been cool to get in touch with and just get in touch with the fact that left to my own devices, this is just what I'll do. If if you give me time, I will just like really want to connect with people and uh, want to share something that I've made. So it, it it was cool to get in touch with that, but no, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a particularly inspired time for me uh, creatively. I I really don't. Um, yeah, I don't have too much energy to create because I don't I don't get energy from people. Well, I I will say that your Instagram postings are quite brilliant. They are quite, <laughs> they are really fun and interesting and exciting. And we'll I want to post links for everyone to what, what I I want them to discover who you are. Um, you know, we've got a, an audience that goes right around the world, and I'm sure you're well known, Chad, right around the world. But connecting you to our audience and to an audience that's hungering for. Um, meaning as well in this time. I, I really identify with what you just said about, you know, people feed my energy and, and mm-hmm. I miss that so much. Can I ask you though, during this time period, something really began to focus in and it was exactly on something you said earlier on the inequities, the unequalness in our society. And mm-hmm. we saw 
with uh, banners and, and marching and, and, and wonderful leaders. The whole theme of Black Lives Matter. How has that spoken to you? I mean, you're a person. I look back on on what you've written. This is my life work. I don't write verses. I'm talking right uh-huh. versus wrong. There's a fight going on, trying to find the right purpose, trying to find the right person who's at the end of my search. Um, and and I, I just I would be very interested in hearing from you on this very subject and and what it's done for you and what you're thinking. It's been, it's been amazing to see because it's definitely, it's definitely new in my lifetime in terms of um, like how this movement for black lives has reached the, just the general consciousness, you know, and, um, and become accepted as, as something to say, as something to champion, as something to, you know, to take very seriously. Like it's, it's really, I, I just think it reached a tipping point. Um, watching NBA games, for example, this year and just seeing, you know, Black Lives Matter across the middle of the court on the back of jerseys. Like this is really unprecedented stuff Yeah. as far as this, this tipping into the mainstream and, and I'm cautiously optimistic like all black people are, but, um well this is different this is new and and part of me thinks that um well once people see a truth it's hard to unsee it if that makes sense like yeah. what you know once that cognitive dissonance is 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 brought up to the surface it's like it has to be resolved one way or the other and so i i do think well i hope that's where our society is at you know you you look around and and you see the inequality. I mean, we all knew that this was it, right? Like we both live in Toronto. If you ask somebody, oh, what's the what's the most what's the the, the poorest uh, neighborhoods in Toronto? Well, it's, it's, it's neighborhoods that are that are racialized neighborhoods with a lot of black people. Like we all knew this stuff, um, but the, that the cognitive dissonance of like why and is that okay and you know like. Once that's firmly in people's minds, I think it has to be resolved. At least that, that's at least that's my hope. So um, I think that's where we're at now. Um, and in American society, it's obviously even more um, it's even more pronounced. But it's it's no different here, of course. And and I think that yeah, in North American society, if not around the world, it's like that's just well, it's kind of in the mainstream consciousness consciousness now it's not just um it's not just with black people or or kind of on the margins it's you know it's everywhere so to me that's that's encouraging um it's something i've never seen in my lifetime and odd that it came up during the pandemic you know it's not what i would have expected but but maybe it's the fact that people were just at home and had to look at something online. And so we're all kind of, we're all kind of looking at the same thing, you know, yeah. for once. We can't, it, one thing is we couldn't look away. We couldn't look yes. away from George Floyd. We couldn't look away from what was going on. I, I think all of us share a concern that something, we, which we often see happen is something's on the front page and it moves through the paper and then it's on the back page and then it's gone. I think mm-hmm. we have to choose to be sure we are willing to look hard and long and thoroughly and be part of the change. I think what's yeah. been exciting is to be to see people marching all around the world, to see people caring, but then bringing it home and saying, what part will I do and how will I be part of this? And what is God asking mm-hmm. of me in all of this, which is, you know, I think an incredibly important question for us. Um, as we're coming into the 25th anniversary of Henry Nouwen's uh, death, which w- will be next year, 2021, uh, I am struck that we're going to be celebrating and acknowledging what Henry is, it was offering us as a spiritual master. There was a timelessness, a, a depth, a significance to his voice, uh, especially as he, in a sense, came to grasp belovedness his belovedness and the belovedness of every single other person. Mm. And I'm I'm curious about whether Henry has had uh, any impact on you, whether his writings have been any kind of a resource for you. Yeah, actually, um, 
my wife and I are reading one of the books that you gave me um, right now. We're, we're reading it. We read together uh, once a week and uh, just as a way of slowing down and, and connecting with each other and connecting with our, um, our core values. Um, and we're reading Here and Now. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And actually, there's a section that we were just reading about, I think it's in the section about hospitality and hostility. And it talks about poverty of mind and poverty of heart. And I really loved, and I really love that. It's something that I've thought about in my work just as a, as a performer, as a interviewer, and also just kind of as a public person. Um, I, I felt this, this consistent challenge to em- empty myself, you know, like, like on, on one hand, um, we get elevated as, as performers, as, as entertainers, as artists, but, but really what people want is our emptiness. They want our poverty of mind and heart, right? Like that's, that's really what we give to people. Like if you love an artist, it's cause you like their, you like their vulnerability. You like their questions, not their answers. Yeah. So it's something that I, I, I thought about before and kind of a consistent challenge I felt for me and my, my work. I mean, certainly as a, as an interviewer, it's, it's much the same, right? Like you have to, it, it's not a complicated task, but it's not a, it's not an easy one. You know, you, you have to empty yourself to create space for somebody else. So, um, yeah, so I, I really loved, uh, I really loved reading that because it, it just it well, it confirmed something that I, I've been thinking about for a long time for, throughout my career, really. Um, but the way that he put it and using that term poverty is is such a nice, pointed, challenging way of saying it, you know, in our society that's all about um, ultimately all about like accumulation and accumulating wealth in one sense or another, you know, whether that's like education and competence and confidence and uh, wealth in the mind or, or, you know, a strong reputation or strong, you know, um, sense of self or something. So, yeah, I, I, I just like that word poverty, you know, throwing that to us as this really strong, like countercultural challenge. I just thought it was a beautiful way of putting it. It's interesting because um, even as I listen to you, um, I am so struck by, in your work as an artist, you really are a standard bearer for, uh, they called it standard bearer for positive rap, but it goes so far beyond that. You've just got, you've got so much to say. Our audience needs to know about this hip hop evolution, which you have, you're literally through four seasons. Are you doing a fifth? Uh, is 2021 going to bring the fifth season of this? Hip hop evolution, by the way, has won Emmys and won, uh, you know, a Peabody. It's it's something people need to see. It's fantastic. But are you going to do a fifth season? I, I hope we can do a fifth season. Uh, we put out the fourth one at the start of 2020 and then everything shut down, obviously. So, um, yeah, if we can if we can resume filming, that'd be awesome, and and be able to make another season. But that it, that wouldn't be done for at least a year. So I I don't think there'd be anything new until like 2022, even if we made if we if we did get the chance to make more. But um, but I think the break would be good anyhow because the show's kind of historical in the sense that um, what well, covers 1970 to around the mid 2000s. So uh-huh. I think if we were going to start to cover beyond that it'd be nice to get a little bit more distance anyway. So uh so I think if this is a good time fortunately this kind of just makes sense as far as a time to take a break. But yeah, I'd love to I'd love to be able to make more um and release some in 2022 or 2023 and cover, you know, into the into the early 2010s maybe. Oh, that's exciting. That That is exciting for your fans and for everybody. And, and you're a, a, an astute voice in this area. Now, another aspect of life for you is you're a growing family. You've got a baby on the way. Is this your first or your second? So actually, the baby, uh, the second one just arrived. So we have wow. two now, uh, two years old, and 
and two months old. Yeah. Wow. How does that shape your thinking? I mean, that's part of the yeah. future, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the funny thing is that it makes me, uh, I laugh because I just feel like it makes me less productive. I feel, I feel content is probably the best word I can, I can come up with. I mean, it's just this sense of like, I don't, I don't really need much else. Um, I enjoy my kids in a really simple way and, and my family and um, it definitely decenters work. Um, if work was ever at the center of my life, it just definitely decenters it. So, yeah, but I, I think more than that, I just, I just do, I do really feel a deep sense of just kind of settledness and, and contentedness with having them around, which is, which has been, which has been great. Um, and I guess I think a lot about what their work is going to be. Um, you know, I, I think they're going to have a lot, a lot of work to do. I'm just trying to do as much as I can. Um, and then, uh, wow, leave, leave, leave the rest to them. They're definitely going to have no shortage of, of things to do, which, which is a heavy burden. But on the other hand, it's also purpose. So, you know, that's not, that's not all bad. Yeah. Good to equip them with courage with wisdom for that, you know, uh, it's right. We are responsible for the next generation and for making sure that they have the courage to, to take the load when we're ready to pass it over to them. Can I ask you, what are you writing about in this crazy year of 2020 when so mm -hmm. much has happened and the pandemic has, you know, exposed such inequalities? What are you, mm -hmm. what are, what's shaking you and what, uh, what's next for you? Um, I've been working on an album here. It's almost done. I really wanted to make a fun album after the last one um, being really heavy. I really wanted to make a fun album. I have a, I, I really like entertaining people and making people feel better and, and making people laugh. And so I really felt when the last album was done a freedom to really tap into that instinct in a, in a fresh way and, and just make something fun. But then the world is what it is and there's a lot on my mind. So I think it's kind of a fun album about how our humanity is eroding. If that makes, if that makes sense as a concept for an album, that's, that's basically what it's about. Uh, I've been thinking about, actually something I wrote in an email to you a little while ago, uh, just, just these different ways that these different, these different dimensions of our humanity, um, parts of our humanity, whether that's spirit or connection to nature or connection to meaningful work, um, connection to each other, these different parts of ourselves and parts of our life and parts of our humanity that, um, well, I think are, are, are floating away from us and leaving us with uh, emptiness, you know, the, the opposite of wholeness, the opposite of, of shalom. So, but trying to make it fun and funny and exciting to listen to. So that's been the, that's been the, the challenge creatively. And that's been fun. I like a, I like a creative challenge. So trying to make an album like that. It's interesting because, you know, we know, it's a nine month event to, to birth a baby. How mm. long does it take you to birth an album? Well, it takes me longer than a lot of folks. Like it, typically I, I put albums out every three years. So usually, you know, one year between albums is like touring. Another year is, is writing and recording. And then another half a year or so uh, after the album is done, getting everything organized to release it. So yeah, usually it takes me about a year to make an album to 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 write and to and to piece it together. I'm not trained as a musician and I'm not uh trained in the studio, so it's a lot of trial and error for me and collaboration as you said um to try and and put something together. So it t it takes me a little a little longer than than some. Good stuff comes out obviously. I mean, it's award-winning, wonderful uh content with depth to it. By the way, you know, when you talked about like having fun. I loved your official video on your website and people have got to see it. It's just charming, but it's so full of, uh, of, um, it makes me smile. It just makes me smile. It's full of laughter and life. And, and, and I love where you're coming from. Actually. I just, I just find it very, uh, I don't know, life-giving and, and yet in the midst of it, there's such 
profound things you're saying that you really, you know, I always believe laughter opens up opens us up to receive truth i believe mm. uh you know it, it, somehow we when we relax and we smile and we ponder we're also wide open to hear deep stuff and i think that's something that you do with a really wonderful balance i i, I really see it in your work and i love it and i i say bravo oh, on this side yeah bravo well thank you i um I, i'm very i'm very tempted to break interview protocol and ask what your sense of the times uh, are i uh I'm very curious. Well, it's it's interesting because, uh, you know, the, the restrictions, I, I really identified with what you said about people. I get fed by people, and it's interesting how, you know, this is wonderful. I enjoy the conversation, but there's something about that human contact. I got to admit, yeah. I'm living on my own. I miss the hugs. I miss the, the physicality yeah. of people, too. Uh, I literally had to get a kitten so that I'd have something mm -hmm. to, you know, interact with physically. And, and that meant a lot to me. I think the times are, I, I'm just amazed at in the midst of a pandemic that we could end up at bringing up something so important this the whole inequality that has that is seen around the world and say black lives matter and we have got to bring about change i'm amazed that that happened at this time i felt mm -hmm. like the plate was full with the agony of what we were going through and yet no it was suddenly like we could focus in a fresh deep way and i have really been excited about that and i'm wanting to see how how i can be part of moving things forward and and uh you know, not letting go, not letting it slip away again. Um, mm -hmm. That That's important. It's funny. One thing I was reminded of, Henry Nouwen marched for peace. He cared about issues like this. He cared about social justice. And then I was thinking, yeah, but did he, did we actually move the ball forward? In some ways, mm -hmm. your concerns for peace, for the environment, for, for justice, I want to be part of a generation that moves it forward as we prepare for your grand, your children, which would be my grandchildren. I mean, that's the age difference mm -hmm. there. I want to be sure we don't drop the ball here. In this, yeah. um, in the last couple of years, one of the things that spoke deeply to me was the Parkland young people. They, I was so moved mm -hmm. by their articulation of the issues, I thought, wow, I wasn't that clever at that age. And I was so spoken to by how they have brought leadership and the generation coming up that's bringing leadership, that's able to voice this. And I, I just I, I just don't want them to let it go. And I want to be part of helping them hold it and bring it forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really, um, I guess, as you're as you're talking, I'm, I'm reminded of um, a scripture in Isaiah, I think. I was reading last week, and I'm not sure at all if this is what was intended in it, but there's a, there's a verse that says something to the effect of, even our righteousness is like a dirty cloth. And, um, and what it made me think of was it made me think of our systems, again, the interconnectedness of, of of all these things, all these different dimensions of our humanity, all these different systems in our society that are in, interconnected, and um, and really the challenge that's in front of us as far as addressing um, racial inequality or, or or any of these or any of these issues, um, you know, because it's so systemic, right? Yeah. Um, and all this stuff is so deeply ingrained. And I guess what it made me think of is is how, you know, this is really a collective project because we're such an individualistic society. You know, we can we can we can be tempted to want to purify ourselves, you know, to try to, like, make sure we are anti-racist. Um, but we can't like it, it just that verse made me feel like, you know what, we actually can't be unless we all are. Mm. because this is so embedded in our systems we actually have to not just free ourselves from this but free each other from this or else it doesn't work you know um it's just i guess another another lovely reminder of how these different aspects of who we are are connected um and how each of us you know we're all wrapped up in each other's story 
Um, and so the, these projects that we're undertaking right now that, you know, they, they really are collective and communal and, and there's something I, I think that's, that's beautiful about that and, and deeply good about that and kind of shakes us out of this Western idea that we can, um, you know, that it's, that it's about our individual sin or our individual mm -hmm. redemption, you know, no, this is like, we actually have to, we have to all do it, you know, or else we're all implicated. Very well put, very well put. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've, we, we are, we're under that light of, of God's honesty in all of this, I think, you know, yes. so, so critical. Can yes. I, um, this is going to be a crazy question, but given the, where we are going into mm -hmm. To this time of year uh we're going into 2021 do you ever make resolutions do you ever think in terms of what will this be year this year be for uh -huh. me is it i one of the things i've always loved about the fact that the new year happens in january is that for me the the new year always began in september i mean if you've gone to school that's when the yeah. new year began but i always think it's a time of new beginnings in the midst of of our darkest hour, literally. Mm -hmm. And I love that about, uh, I love that about where New Year's begin. Do you have any thoughts mm -hmm. looking into the year ahead? Um, I don't have any resolutions yet, but I, I do believe in resolu New Year's re resolutions. Just, just because I, um, I believe in momentum, you know, and galvanizing momentum and, and marking things, marking time. Um, and and we do that with the with the church calendar, but we can also do it with the with the new year and and some of these dates on the calendar too. You know, I just yeah. I believe in that. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. it's perfect. Um, so yeah, I have I have nothing yet on my agenda, but I I do always try to think of like yeah, what what the new year could be about um for me, and and try to like yeah use the use January 1st as a way to kind of like launch into it. It's interesting because I, I think we live on the shoulders of many, you know, of people mm. who have influenced us. We also live on the shoulders of our own lives. Um, you know, mm. we're, we, we're here at this moment and there's this stepping forward. I always love being with people who are in the process of becoming, that there's a next thing. There mm. is the reality of a responsibility that so much has happened in your life. You have incredible credibility. You have incredible gifts and, uh, and you have all sorts of recognition for that. But it's almost like you're standing on a new open field and you say, God, take me forward, take me into it and, and, and use every part of me. And, and I picture God using you, Shad. I think you're a gift oh, thank to you. all of us. I really do. I, I, I appreciate that, Karen. Thank you. Um, that's very, that's very encouraging. Yeah. And yeah, and, and launching into it with like, like now and said with that, that poverty of mind and heart, right. And saying, yes, like, yeah, I'm open. I'm open to being foolish. I'm open to losing everything, you know, like, mm -hmm. like with a renewed, a renewed sense of that every year is, is so, so good too. Oh, it's the brave ones that are willing to walk out on the tightrope and say, I can lose it all. And I believe you have that gift. And that's what makes you such an outstanding artist. I'm really, uh, I, uh, I see that in you and I see it. I also get excited to see the doors that God will put before you, Shad. Thank you. You can be trusted with doors because you'll go through them and you'll be sincere and honest about what's there um may there be blessing on your household on that those two little people that that are there they'll mark the time for you the year will happen with incredible <laughs> speed it will be no time at all before that the youngest is walking and the the two-year-old is uh, fully into the terrible twos probably but it, yes. whatever <laughs> yeah yeah thanks so much for giving me this time i'm really grateful and i'm i'm grateful that you could find the ways in which you are hearing Henry speak. I found that really powerful too, very useful. And I'd love to continue this conversation throughout the year. Perhaps we can come back and check in at this point and hear how it's going. I, I would love that. Oh, great. Thanks so much, Shad. Really thanks, appreciate thanks it. Thanks a lot, Karen. This was great. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. I hope this interview with Shad has challenged and encouraged you. And we also hope you'll share it with others who are dear to you. For more resources related to today's podcast, 
click on the links on the podcast page of our website. You're going to find additional content, book suggestions, links to Shad's site, and additional material might include books to get you started in case you're new to the writings of Henry Nowen. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, or follow us on social media for more Henry Nowen content. For books, videos, and other resources, or if you'd like to receive free daily Henry Nowen e-meditations, you can follow the links below.